Hey, welcome to day 25. Our word for today is diligence. And we want to be diligent and remember our fasting friend, Carol. So she will be our star for today. Thank you, Carol. And uh, we will remember you as we pray. Let's unite our prayers and start with our unity prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, Blessed Lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, so Lord, whoo, Lord help me to walk along your shores of prayer between the waves of distraction and the sands of dryness. Grace me with enduring patience and strength that I may resu res resolutely advance along your rich landscape of virtues. Resolutely um, means in a determined or a firm manner. So like firmly, right? Like um, advance me firmly along your rich landscape of virtues. And the virtue that you could think of is fortitude, right? The virtue of fortitude will help you resolutely advance along the, the divine will of our Lord. Help me to arrange my private prayer and my private prayer life in a disciplined manner and to diligently cultivate it, never to leave my spiritual practice for a worldly one. That's a tough one. Help me to take time each day to be still, to calm the noisy confusion within me, to control my enormous mental energy and simply adore you. Save me from the living in, uh, save me from living in the periphery of my soul. Uh, periphery of a soul, you might, as a visual, think of a bullseye and God is at the center, right? Everybody wants to get a bullseye. And the periphery is that very, very outer boundary. Um, the dictionary said external boundary or the very outer edge. Um, and so, it might be comfortable in that outer edge of our spiritual life, but God wants you to come deeper, right? He wants to cultivate that in you and, and draw you in closer. As St. John of the Cross would say, is akin to being in a loud, boisterous neighborhood or a busy marketplace. Akin is um, similar. It's just another way of saying it's similar, right? So that periphery of our soul can be noisy and it can be loud and distracting. And St. John of the Cross is also urging us to get out of that noisy and come centered to the silence um, with our Lord. Silence my exterior senses, my fantasies and worries that perturb my perception of inner realities. Quiet my soul, the frontier between God and man where I can encounter you my Lord. Perturb, um, I know a lot of people know what it means, but I want you to really get an understanding of how perturb is one really packed word. It's great disorder. It's confusion, annoyance, agitation, irritated, flustered, and you take all of that and you confound it into this uh, distracting basket, right? That's perturb. And that's what's preventing us from having that diligent prayer life, right? Because we're like, if this is what prayer looks like, it's exhausting. And it's, it's, oh, it's, it's hard. I'm tired. I'm this. And it's like, no, the silence is where you're going to find your peace and your calmness. So make time for that prayer. Our spiritual exercise says, have you noticed that you always have plenty of time for the things that you love? But there's never enough time for the things that you don't. Some people dread, avoid, or find little joy in prayer because they spend the time worriedly digging into their troubles 
rather than just focusing on the Lord. It is so much harder to be diligent in prayer if prayer is more a matter of discipline than desire. Turn your thoughts heavenward. Look up to Jesus, who walked on water. Keep from peering down into the stormy seas. The more you gaze at him, the more prayer will be a joy. And I think of adoration, right? We are so blessed in this diocese that so many parishes have numerous opportunities to visit adoration. I know our church is limited, but I go to other parishes and I'm able to just, even if it's 15 minutes, just sit. If you sit for 15 minutes in front of the adoration, it just calms your whole being. It really does. Even if you don't, there's nothing happening. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. It is happening. It is. And it is, it becomes more and more joyful when you appreciate the silence. St. John Christosom, our saint for the day, says, Whether you receive what we ask for or do not receive it, let us still continue steadfast in prayer. For to fail in obtaining the desires of our heart, when God so wills it, is not worse than to receive it. For we know, not as he does, what is profitable to us. Right? God knows the desires of our hearts. He knows your needs and your desires. So just focus on him and let him take care of it, right? We surrendered it. Halfway through, we surrendered it. So don't pick it back up. Be diligent. Do not pick that back up today. Leave it. Leave it with the Lord. Second Timothy is our scripture. Second Timothy 2, 11 through 14. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died in him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. That is so beautiful, right? So no matter what we do, God's still going to be right there in our corner waiting for us to invite him back into that space. So that's my prayer for you today is that you will um, be diligent in your prayer. And maybe you started this journey and mornings are just not working and you're finding yourself all the way at the end of the day and you're just like, I'm just trying to get it in. And, and it's like, well, maybe mornings isn't your thing. Try maybe lunch or mid-afternoon or right before dinner or right after dinner. You know, just this is a good point in this 46 day journey to reassess when when would make a good prayer time for you so that when this 46 days is complete, you can keep going with those little bitty meditations. Trust me, between me and Liz and some of the other ladies in this group, we can keep you busy for a lifetime of meditations anyway. <laughs> I know Liz has a slew of saints. Thank you, Arlene, because you've been putting in some beautiful saints I was so grateful for the reminder of St. Catherine of Drexel yesterday. Um, so thank you. And don't hesitate to share the littlest thing. Like yesterday, I had a really good experience with the friendliness. I had a lady from the group share um, just something so friendly with me, and it really touched my heart. So no matter how little, how small, share it with the group because your story could be what just gives that one person a little spark of hope to be diligent in prayer. So let's close with Father Ignacio. This is number 56. If you have the little book, it's called Word and Fire. Let me make sure, let me double check, make sure this is the one I wanted to. Well, not me. I prayed beforehand and I literally, I don't think we repeat any of the prayers. The Holy Spirit gave me all these prayers in the order he wanted me to share. Uh, Word and Fire. Yes. Number 56. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, fountain of life and warmth, send us your living word. Let us greet it without fear and let us be embraced by it. Let your word come, Lord. And when, your, when our hearts are aflame with your unquenchable fire, we will transmit this fire to one another. Transform us, Lord, into warm and glowing words able to set the world on fire 
so that each person may feel wrapped in the infinite flames of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, be blessed, my friend, and we'll see you tomorrow.